everyone and welcome to our this year's interview. Today I have the pleasure to have with me Christina and Gerald who will talk about their experience in Finding Need India Trust so far. Welcome guys. I am Dorina, I'm 21 years old from France and I am currently doing my internship at Finding Need Trust India. Um, and today we're going to ask uh, Jay and Christina a few questions on um, their experience about their internship and also how it is going now with the COVID situation. So welcome guys and would you maybe be so kind to introduce yourself Christina first? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Cristina. I'm from Spain. Um, I graduated in August from the Master of Public Policy and Human Development from Master University and Union Merit. And then a month later, I started this internship with uh, Friends in India, which is um, sadly <laughs> coming to an end this month. But yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, and enough for me. Uh, my name is Jairaj Gopalakrishnan. I'm from India, but I was born and brought up in Dubai. Uh, I did my bachelor's in economics and business at Mystic University. So the same city as Christina, but a different university within the city. Uh, and I had and I have been going through this internship since the start of 2020. So just all, at the onset of COVID, I got this internship to work with Professor Romney on a multitude of projects. And it's been quite the experience trying to work through this university, as well as trying to maintain the online structure that like COVID mandated us to do so. Uh, so yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, guys. So maybe the first question would be, how did you find out about uh, this inter internship position specifically? Uh, my story was a little bit more uh, informal. So for me, I think like our course itself, usually the courses at Maastricht, you need to actually have like an exchange program abroad. So you go from Maastricht University to one of their partner universities across the world. Uh, but for my program specifically, and I think the program that you're following now during the Emerging Markets program, you need to have an internship. Uh, and that's made purposely because it actually is a much more rigorous process to try to find a job at our age with the lack of experience that we have and everything uh, rather than to just easily go into an exchange program abroad so that was the reason why i was looking for an internship uh, and obviously this was pre-covid so we went through the normal processes of trying to apply as much as you can through graduate land and like multiple million different websites uh, and also through like interviews and everything like that. But since I wanted more of a research focus, uh, nothing really clicked as well. Uh, but there was one fine day where one of my tutors, Ibrahima at Mistrik, asked me how my internship search was going. And I'm like, yeah, there's, there's literally nothing for me out here. Like I have a few accounting jobs, but that's pretty much it. Like there's nothing that I want to do. Uh, and he actually, told me about Maria, who's the PhD student who works very closely uh, with Professor Romani now. And he said that she's she's heading a few projects at UNU. Uh, maybe get in touch with her and they might have something where they can, they can take your help. So I got in touch with Maria and she's like, oh, this was around uh, maybe November last year. And she's like, oh, the, we have a World Toilet Day event uh, at UNU Merit coming up. So that's on the 19th of November every year. Uh, we would like to see if you would be interested in joining that and you can get a chance to meet me and Professor on that day as well. Uh, so 19th of November rolled around. I went, I went for the event. It was, it was fun. It was mostly a quiz and a lot of uh, like factoids about toilet, toilets. But uh, I finished that entire session and then Professor walked up to me and she's like, oh, okay, so you wanted an internship. I'm like, yeah, from a state university, I've been studying this, but like none of these normal jobs actually work out for me. I just want to research and I want to study a bit more. Uh, she's like, okay, how, how much do you know about sustainability? Like I've seen it being used as a buzzword so far, but nothing in depth. She's like, do you mind studying about sustainability and teaching about sustainability? Like, Why not? I'd love to. And that was how I had an internship. There was no contract, no interview, no nothing. She was like, okay, you want to learn about something? I can give you that chance. Uh, all you got to do is like promise that you work hard and uh, promise that make it, that you give me your time. I'm like, I can I can roll with that. I'm good with that. That's actually awesome. Yeah. What about you, Christina? 
Um, actually, a friend of mine from the master, he uh, saw Shema's post on LinkedIn uh, explaining the internship and what you had to do to apply and everything. And then he tagged me uh, on the comments. So I, that's how I saw it because he was following. I mean, Shama works at our faculty and our master and I didn't know her. So that's why I didn't have her on my LinkedIn account. Uh, but my friend did. So thankfully, uh, he, he thought it was a good opportunity for me. And uh, I applied and Shama was really fast. I think she replied to me the same day I sent my application saying that she liked what I wrote and that I, I think like, I think you got it. And then two days or something later, she said like, yeah, you definitely got it. And you are part of the internship. And I was like, that is so cool because I, I was very afraid of not getting anything after uh, graduation uh, because I was, I spent already like a month. I mean, it's not too much a month, but it's already like, you know, sometimes you spend every day f searching for things um, during a pandemic, which is not really a suitable time to, to find <laughs> a job or any internship opportunity. So I was really grateful for ha getting it. So. Um, but yeah, uh, can you maybe guys explain which uh, kind of task uh, you were asked to do so far and maybe also which skills uh, you improved so far? I mean, like in terms of skills, it's going to be hard to actually put that down. I think of improve everything like it's going to be very hard to actually like spot down things because especially like that's the main difference between something like education and experience right like there'll be a ton of things that you learn but it's more like rote learning or off a paper or off a textbook or off discussions in university uh, but once you've actually got into the nitty-gritty and done the work from scratch with people around you with academics with like other people like you people who are much better than you helped people who couldn't do their things like through that through those entire experiences you kind of grow in multiple facets you'll grow like i think i've gotten much better working as a team i know that in mystic university it's actually it gets really difficult to actually coordinate as a team with a lot of people uh because they have different work styles they have different times of day where they finish some work and all of that uh, so you get better to work together, you get better to communicate, uh, you won't shy away from kind of taking the lead or taking the stance ahead. Uh, and that, those are like a few of the soft skills. In terms of actual like hard skills, I've gotten much better at writing and like just research. So it's like something that we all did together was uh, scoping reviews uh, with professors. So it, got, it actually, it's something that I haven't done before. And it would be something that's really, really useful for like a thesis or for like a research paper because it gives you a large amount of data in a very very short span of time where you don't need to pay too much attention to it as well uh but some of the tasks that i need to do on the other hand uh my first month was pretty much professor just came up to me and she's like okay what i want you to do is that is that i want you to study as much as you can about waste that's it that was the only thing she told me to do it's like you can sit at home, do like you can do whatever you want for the first month, but study about waste. And the first day of work, I want you to be able to answer the question, what is waste? So like it's kind of very difficult to actually understand like why is the, why does that take a month, right? Like it's a Google search. It's, it's simple, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But I'm like, okay, cool. I'll take this for a month, but I'll also start like thinking about my thesis and start developing that. So I have a lot of time on my hands. Uh, but the second, the first day of work actually rolled by and I'm like, okay, cool. What is, what is waste? Waste is this, like all of these things that we're throwing away and all of that. It's like, yeah, no, that's not right. <laughs> you got to go study again. <laughs> I'm like, huh, okay. So this happened like on and off for like more than a week. And then she's like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to tell you waste isn't anything like everything has value waste is something that inherently doesn't have any value but whatever you're throwing things that you're throwing if it's food you, it can be composted if it's plastic it can be recycled if it's glass it can be recycled if it's this it can... so there's always something to do with whatever we think is waste and that's the first like transformative thing in terms of concepts that she's told me or taught me it's that when regardless of this doesn't need to stick to material things but even if you think you're wasting time, like you're taking a break, it's something that your body needs. It's something that you need to do. So it's not really a waste if it's something that you need to do, if it's something that's benefiting you in any way. 
even if you're looking away from your thesis to play a game, it feels like like your brain knows that your thesis is more important. But if it still persists that, okay, you need to do something else, it's for your benefit. It's for you to actually believe that you're becoming better. So there is no waste, like from a material perspective or otherwise. Uh, so my task started off with like learning about that. And then we started with the Green Academy project, which is we started creating modules. So me and Rita, another one of our interns, and my classmate in uni, uh, both of us started writing down and we started basically creating a table of contents for what we need to cover in something like this. And over the next few months, it was the four of us, me, Maria, Rita, and Professor, just bouncing ideas off each other. And me and Rita are writing it down, like just making a book out of everything. So through all of our conversations, late night dinners, and all of these things, like we, I, I think by June, we came out with something that we were proud of, that we were happy with as a module uh, for research. And during this time, obviously, we're doing, uh, we're dealing with the pandemic. We're doing our thesis as well. And uh, Professor, at some point in March, uh, she saw the amount of, it's not exactly misinformation, but the lack of information that existed for uh, specific countries when it came to information regarding COVID. So she wanted to create an, a global information campaign for that and translate it into a variety of languages. So me and Rita were working on that, just creating the, the first posters that can then be translated in like a variety of languages, like three or four African languages from Rita and her friends, uh, multiple European languages from her contacts through you and you, uh, like multiple like multiple Indian languages as well. So through all of that, so that was just like the first six months of my internship. That was the one that was mandated by uh, our university, uh, by Mystic University, that she's supposed to work for six months. Uh, and then obviously by this time I'd taken a professor as a mentor. So I was just like, I want to go for my master's, but do you think it makes sense uh, under COVID? She's like, no, but if, if you want to go for your master's, you can go for it. But if you don't want to go for your master's, I will make sure you work. I'm like, huh. I didn't know she'd stick up to the end of her bargain like that well because it was stressful. But, uh, but she did make me work and it was quite, uh, quite the growth from from like July as well, July, August onwards, because that's when we started this internship at the P2 program, where we started talking to multiple uh, small enterprises in in India and outside to find our own, uh, to find our information and creating our blogs, starting our written works, uh, consistently performing research, uh, and through the grants that, like I just mentioned to you guys as well, like we're going to OT, uh, me and Riley, another, one of our American counterparts. So applying for those grants, applying for multiple grants from uh, Cypher Society's point as well. Uh, so I've actually gotten a lot of experience into like filling in applications for these things, uh, getting better at writing down different forms of written works. Like it's not necessarily just a research uh, paper, but a policy brief, blogs, articles, opinion pieces, uh, all of these things have its own like method of writing and its own like uh, idea that you want to put forward and that sort of experience only comes in when someone tells you to do these things because you won't really find the difference if no one's really checking you uh, and it's come down to like a lot of reading a lot of studying understanding which sources are trusted and which aren't because that's one probably one of the most important skills that we can develop uh like in this world like today um but yeah i think that's, that's probably like most of my tasks and most of my skills if, if it's come to like improvement. But overall, it's just been everything. Like, I don't think even, like I can't recognize the person that was a year back with this entire uh, experience. Um, for me, it's uh, been less time than Jay. I've been here since uh, doing this internship since October. Um, but I think we, it, it is true that we improve I think all the skills that matter to every job position. So every job position, you always have these several skills that are always the same, no matter the job position you're asked for or the institution, organization, whatever. Uh, so I think it, it we really improve all of that. It, we improve like communication skills. So we um, have meetings every week and, and we have even like you, like the three of us, we also have meetings besides 
um, for doing our, our projects and our work. But then we also uh, learn how to talk with uh, people from different seniority levels, you know, different positions. So that is, I think, is also very important because we are very used to talk with colleagues at, uh, at uni and in a university environment, but a work environment is completely different. And I think we also learn to navigate through uh, that communication uh, manners in, in a work environment. Um, also with, uh, I know we uh, had uh, the interviews and the meetings with Amit, which is also like, it's not even like uh, within the organization, but it's like a partner. So it's also important how to talk with uh, a partner in a partnership uh, or between organizations and companies. So I think communication skills, definitely. And then obviously some other type of skills, so writing we and and also different tasks. That's what I like about the interview is that uh, internship is that I I managed to do a lot of different tasks, whereas other internships you just do like probably just administrative stuff and and tasks. And in this uh, internship is like a lot of things. And if you want to um, do more, then you can do more, and you can ask for more work and different work. And 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 Shema and Maria and other people will find stuff for you to do uh, that you want to do. So I think we also like uh, we learn how to write blogs, which is different from writing academically, like we use in, in university or writing a thesis, you know. I think, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a different research, uh, what you do when you write a blog instead of a, of a, a paper. Uh, we also learn, yeah, as Jay said, like scoping review or systematic review um, research that is completely different. And it was really nice to see uh, how academics do it, because usually when we're at university, we don't really know, at least that's for me, I usually don't know what I'm doing or if I'm doing it right or if academics actually do that you know, when they are researching. So it was really nice to see what they do. And it's actually less time consuming than we, I think what we do at university was so that we spend more time researching and we actually research less than using, I don't know, a scoping review or some other um, ways of, of doing research. So that was also really interesting to see. Um, we also did like, I don't know, like we would did design a website, which I didn't thought I will ever do in my life and designing uh, posters and infographics. And so I think it was like really a lot of different things. And you guys, you also did, um, you organize events. So that is also really nice. And, and something that, you know, it, it improves a lot uh, or like gives a lot of value on your CV, you know? I would like to thank you very much guys for this very insightful interview and I wish you good luck for the future. Bye-bye.